Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a men's team comprised of a right-handed player and a left-handed player. They choose to stack, but they go about it in a very ineffective way. So what is it they do wrong? Watch and find out. This game was played at the 3.5 level. Thanks to the Team Hanlon Pickleball YouTube channel for posting it. Let's go. Here are the players. The team in the near court is the team that is going to stack as the player on the left is right-handed and the player on the right is left-handed. The serve was just made. Nice deep return. Having to defend here. Nice job. Good hands, and the ball is put away, so a very good start to a 3.5 game. Both of these teams look very capable. All right, as you can see, they are stacking. He's going to serve in this left court and then move over to the right court. The issue does not come up when they are serving. The stacking issue comes up when they are receiving. Just got caught right there, just not a good third shot. Hit it right to the gray's, uh, gray shirt's put-away zone. So here's where the issue comes up. Now look at the guy on the left side of the court. He has his hand behind him, and he's giving a signal to his partner to stack. So what's going to happen is once this serve is made and the serve is returned, the guy on the right side of the court is going to go to the left side of the court, and the guy with his hand behind his back is just going to move over to the right. And that's where it all went wrong. Great job by the guy in the gray shirt in the far court by noticing that the player that was on the right side of the court and was attempting to get to the left side of the court did not get there in time. There's a couple of reasons that that happened. So let's go back and take a look. The first reason is his return of serve was not deep enough and it was not lofted enough, allowing him enough time to get established at the non-volley zone. Let's watch the return. Again, here is the serve. Here's the return. It's just not deep enough. Look where the ball hits, just over the uh, non-volley zone line. And now watch where the guy that is trying to get to the non-volley zone is when his opponent hits the ball. He hits it right here. He's in the middle of the court. He was nowhere near to being established at the non-volley zone. And again, a great job by the guy in gray to have court awareness to see where his opponents were on the court. He hit it right to the guy who was moving forward. And all he can do is pop it up and he puts it away. You've got to be quicker than that if you're going to stack. He was not quick enough. His opponent saw it and took full advantage of it. Now, they're going to do it again. He's signaling to his partner to go ahead and stack this time. And let's see if they can get it right this time. There it is. Okay, okay, so this guy forgot to stack. I mean, instead of running diagonally, he ran straight forward. Now he's having to go to the side to try to get to the other court. He can't get there in time. Pops it straight up. And he hits it right into the net. So that whole approach was discombobulated. It's like he really did not understand what to do as he started moving forward instead of moving directly to the other court. Let's see if they're going to do it again. Yeah, he's got his... No, that time I think he told him to stay in his court and not move over. Nope, see what happened there? So that guy in the left court tried to get kind of fancy there as he faked moving to the right. Let's see if that worked. So far, so good. They did not stack that time, but still the team in the other court just knocked it right down the center of the court. Great shot. Again, great uh, job by the team in the far court seeing where their opponents were. Look at this serve. Okay, so that is a serve that I do have in my repertoire of serves. It has a lot of side spin on it, and it forces my opponent out of the court. Just watch how good of a job this player did putting spin on his serve. Watch how far it gets his opponent 
out of the court. Look where he is when he's having to hit the ball, and he doesn't even come close to getting that ball into the court. So very, very effective nice serve, serve by the guy in black. This player is instructing his partner to stack. So far, it has not come close to working. Nope, now you see what happened there? He did tell him to stack, but now he is holding him off. He put his right hand out and told him not to stack. Unfortunately, the guy in the backcourt did not hit it to the guy who was stuck at the back of the court. Instead, he hit it up, allowing the partner in the uh, front of the court to get to this ball. That's gone. Oh, good, good get. And he hit it right out of the court. Just long, 5-1-1. So now the score is 5-1. to one. The team in the near court is in big time trouble here. Let's see what they're going to do. Are they going to change their strategy and not stack? And he called timeout because they're behind 5-1. to one. The uh, Hanlon Pickleball who was filming this actually moved the camera so it, the fence would not be in the way. But again, t starting from here, the score is 5-1. to one. To stack or not to stack? Oh, are they going to stack? Oh, they have no idea what to do. They are both in the left-hand side of the court. No idea what to do here. Just pop straight up, and that point is over. And it's like they're talking to each other now, like, what are you doing? Am I supposed to stack? Am I not supposed to stack? Were you running to that court? It's like the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. And so far, this is a total disaster. Now they're going to stack. And he was there in time and can't get the ball over Seven. the net. And look at him. Look at his body language. Just has his hand on his uh, waist and just going like, man, what is going on here? They're talking to each other again. And what they should be telling each other is, let's stop stacking. Of course, they're going to tap paddles after they're behind by the score of, I think, seven, one to seven. Here we go again. Oh, he had him again, except for he hit the ball into the net. If he gets that ball over the net, the guy on the right side of the court is in trouble once again because the stacking just is not working. Looks like they're going to stack again. There's the hand signal. Oh, here we go. Got it that time. Oh, that's a nice little lob. Put it away. Okay, so this point should be going to the team in the far court because they are at the 9 volley zone and the team in the back of the court is running around running around but that was a nice reset so good job by him oh he hits that shot again and he got it in oh got the roll of the tape there put it away put it away oh come on you can't do that you can't just pity pat the ball over the net when your players are stuck at the back of the court he should have been much much more aggressive and look at that. Look at that. The team in the near court won that point, and the guy right there with the backwards hat on is going like, I can't believe we won that point. Never give up because your opponent might make the mistake of, number one, not being aggressive enough, and number two, hitting the ball into the net. Good shot. Just popped up too high. Now the guy in the Jackson Classic shirt has that doggone frying pan grip. I'm seeing that more and more, and I'm just really shocked at how many players play with a frying pan grip instead of a continental grip. If you're just starting out and you're playing pickleball, uh, you know, for the very first, second, third, fourth, or fifth time, don't use that panhandle grip. Look at this. The guys in the near court are running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. The team in the backcourt has total control of this point, and he hits it right out of the court. Wow. Okay, they're stacking right here, which is totally fine, because all the guy that is serving has to do is move over. Again, the issue is when they are stacking, when they are receiving the ball. The team in the near court is being much more aggressive than the team in the back court when they have the opportunity to put the ball away. 
Okay, so that's interesting what happened there. It's very clear what the player on the left side of the court said. said. And let me uh, just turn up the volume for a second here. He said, got it. He said he got the shot. The ball bounces, and watch what happens. Again, the guy on the left side has called the ball. He said, I got it. The ball bounces, and he doesn't swing. Miscommunication, and he's telling him. I don't know what he's telling him. He probably should be saying, hey, that's totally my fault. I told you I was going to hit the ball, and I did not hit it. But that's sometimes what happens when one player is right-handed and the other player is left-handed, and the middle of the court is to their forehands. Sometimes that happens, and that's exactly what took place. But that was the guy on the left side of the court's ball. He called it all the way. These guys just are not aggressive enough. They are allowing the players to get the ball back. Ooh, that time they hit it where the players were not. But they just can't pity-pat that ball back. They've got to be more aggressive when they have the opportunity to put the ball away. This the backhand. Okay, so he just told his opponent to stay on the left side of the court. Of course, because now they uh, both have their forehands. I'm not sure why he was giving him that signal. Oh, that ball was going out. He hit it anyway and was able to knock it out his feet, but... The ball's at your eyes, pretty much let it fly. Oh, the team in the near court had the opportunity to go on a scoring run here, and he hit his serve out of the court. Now, I must admit, it seems like it's a very windy day, so if the wind is behind him, I can totally understand that's happening. But again, whenever the wind is blowing strong like it is on this particular day, you just have to be very careful to get your serve in because the wind can sometimes just wreck havoc on the ball. And he misses the third shot. So the team in the near court had the opportunity to get back some points. The first server hit it out of the court. The second server missed the third shot drop, giving control of the ball to their opponents. Nice get. Nice job by the guy on the right to go over into the other court and get that ball. Very nice. That team has that shot down pat. That little lob that hits about a foot before the service line. That was very good. The other team was athletic enough to go and get it and get that ball. Unfortunately, those two uh, exchanges right there, the team in the near court does not get any points because they were not serving. If they wouldn't have served the serve out and missed the third shot, they would have been serving and would have actually scored some points. Four, eight, one. Nah, Tried the third shot drop, didn't quite make it. The guy in gray was able to take it out of the air and put the ball away. Just another backhand. Nine, four, one. Nice reset. Nice reset again. Put it away. Good awareness as to where his opponents were on the court. He saw the opening on the left side and put it right there. So very nice job by the guy in the near court on the left side. And he misses his serve. Score is 9-4-2. The team in the far court has an opportunity to close out the game, and he cannot get his serve in. This team in the near court can come back from 9-4. to four. All they have to do is get on a scoring run. Pickleball is a game of scoring runs. And look at the guy in the back. He's looking to the heavens like, what did I just do? When you have the opportunity to close out a game, you've got to close it out. I've been on the receiving end of a loss when I was up 9-2, to 9-3, 9-4, and the other team came back.
Put it away. There he goes again. God, I don't know what he wants. Nice top spin, and he hits it out of the court. I mean, the guy in gray just, in my opinion, is not aggressive enough when that ball is put into his put-away zone. He's just hitting it in the center of the court. He's not hitting it at any angle, and he's allowing his opponents to get back in the point. That time he didn't. That was with his backhand. Maybe he should hit his backhand more often than his forehand. Oh, great shot. Right down the line. Did you see what happened? It's quite obvious. The stacking did not work here. Here's the serve. He is going to hit it. Now he's running up when he should be running to his left, and his partner doesn't know what he's doing. His partner thinks at this point he is going to cover the right court. But instead, he changes his mind mid-court, moves to his left. The partner cannot react enough in time, and he cannot get there. That is just totally the player right here. It is his fault because, because he should have immediately ran to his left. He didn't. He ran forward. His opponent had no idea what he was doing, and the court was open. This first game is almost over, and they're still talking about what they should do and how they should handle this stacking because so far it just has not worked out. And he hits another serve out of the court. Again, another chance to close out the match, and he misses his serve. That's twice he's done that. Here we go again with the stack. Good God. Come on, put the ball away, finally. Took him three times, but he did it. That is the end of the game. The team in the far court wins by the score of 11-4. to four. Actually, it was really good overall play. This is at the 3.5 level. I think they did really well. I think the team in the near court deciding to stack was a disaster. So there you have it. Don't let stacking get you miscombobulated. The team that was stacking lost the first game, but they came back to win the final two games and they won the match. What's interesting is, over the last two games, they only had to stack six times when their opponents were serving. So stacking did not play a major factor in the last two games. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really do appreciate you watching, and I hope you learned something from watching this video. If you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching, and see you on the court.